Hey, 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 everyone. I'm Rosie with K15T, and welcome back to our Confluence Beginner Guide, where you're learning Confluence from start to finish. Last time, we learned about using templates, and now it's time to be able to share those pages that you've created. That's why today we're covering basic collaboration within Confluence. Confluence is all about working together to get the best results for you and your team. So let's get into it. So here we are back in our Confluence site. And what's really cool about Confluence is it allows you to collaborate with people in real time. So when they make a change, you see the change right away as it's being done. For example, you can see right here this little E, which means that my colleague Erica is also editing at the same time. And you can see her cursor as she's moving. You can also see if somebody else is in edit mode on your page by going up here to the toolbar and seeing which other avatars are there. So I'm logged in as Aziza and she is Erica. So that's how I know there's two people on the page right now. And as soon as Erica will leave the edit mode, then you can see that her little avatar will disappear just like so. So let's say that I'm done editing this page and now I want to share it with some colleagues. I'll go ahead and hit the update button or if I'm in the live editor, then I don't need to hit the update button and it will just automatically be updated. And then I can go ahead and click this share button right up here. So I can either type in some team members names and add them that way and share the page with them that way. I can add a little message right here just to add some context. So I can do it like that pretty directly and just hit the share button. Or what else I could do is I could hit this copy link button right here and then I could send them a direct link in a messenger like Slack. You could also share it directly in Slack by hooking up your account to your Confluence site just like that. When you wanna share a page, it's just important to make sure that whoever you're sharing it with actually has access to see the page. So you can just check the restrictions really quick to just see, okay, anyone in this space can edit, which also means that anyone in this space could also view the page, easy. Let's say you wanted to send your page to a shareholder or you had release notes or something like that, and you needed to share your page with somebody who doesn't have Confluence or isn't on your Confluence site. Then you'll go ahead and share them with a public link. And a public link is really great because it just lets them view the page. It doesn't actually give them access to edit or adjust anything. Keep in mind for this to be an option, your admin needs to give you access to send public links. To turn on the public link, you'll just go ahead and switch this little button over here and turn on the public link, like so. Then we'll go ahead and copy the public link and we'll open it in another tab in our browser to see what it looks like if we sent it to somebody outside of Confluence. Now you can see here, it's a completely different view. They don't have any of the Confluence buttons. They only have the option to open in Confluence, but otherwise they just see the page that you sent them and nothing else. It should also be mentioned that everybody who has the public link has access to view this page. So be careful who you share it with. You can turn off a public link at any time and it's just as easy as it was to turn it on. You'll just go ahead and hit the little switch and turn off the public link just like so. And then in that case, even if somebody has the link and they use it again, I will go ahead and enter it in a browser just to see what it would look like. And it'll just show nothing, which is really great. So your privacy is all protected. In further regards to sharing your content in Confluence, we also have a video and an article to dive even deeper into that topic, which we'll link in the description for you. Another great way where you can share your documentation from Confluence externally is with Scroll Viewport for Confluence. Scroll Viewport is an app for Confluence that lets you transform your documentation in Confluence into a public or restricted online help center for your users. Go ahead and check it out in the Atlassian Marketplace for more information, or we also have a couple videos on it on our channel. So now that you know how to share your page with people, the collaborators might leave such things like inline comments, which is what you see right here, this little yellow highlight. Inline comments are best for targeted feedback on specific words, sections, or photos so that they can be discussed in context. Inline comments are best for temporary feedback since after they're resolved, they won't pop up anymore. Inline comments are super easy to add. You'll just go ahead and highlight the text that you want, whether in the editor mode or not in the editor mode. Hit comment, and then you can leave your comment. You can also have whole entire discussions with inline comments. So if I wanted to reply to Erica here, I could just go ahead and at mention her so she gets the notification, and then I could write my response. And 
can go ahead and save my comment. That will give her a notification. And I can also react to her comment, just showing her, hey, I've seen that. Thanks for leaving the comment. I acknowledge it, but I don't really necessarily need to leave more words. In addition to inline comments, we also have page comments, which are found at the very bottom of the page. So when should you opt for a page comment instead of an inline comment? Page comments are most effective when your feedback applies to the entirety of the page rather than just an individual section, or if you wanted to spark a discussion with your colleagues about the content of a page. Unlike inline comments that can be resolved and disappear afterwards, page comments stay until they're deleted, if they ever even are deleted. Adding a comment couldn't be easier. It's very straightforward. Confluence leads you through everything for that. You can also reply to other comments and have whole entire discussions. And you can also leave reactions to comments. For even more information, we have an article all about the must knows about comments in Confluence, which again, we'll link in the description for you. You'll also receive notifications while someone is editing your page. So you can see here up in the little notification bar, Erica edited your page eight minutes ago, plus three updates. And you can go ahead and click on that. You can see what inline comments she left. You can see that she reacted to your comments, just making it really easy to see what's going on in your collaboration on your page. You can also see up in your toolbar if you have an unread comment, and this will have that little blue dot next to it. And then you can just go ahead and click on that and it will lead you right to the comment that you haven't read yet. Collaborating in Confluence is pretty straightforward. They do a great job of sending you notifications and updates when something happens or if somebody shares something with you or reacts to something. So it just makes it really simple for you and your team to collaborate on any sort of page or whiteboard or whatever it may be. That's a wrap on this video. You should now feel confident on how to collaborate within your Confluence site. In our next tutorial, we'll be talking about permissions and restrictions. In the meantime, did we miss anything? Go ahead and let us know in the comments. And while you're down there, check out the description box to find even more helpful Confluence resources. Of course, hit those like and subscribe buttons so we can keep helping you and you can focus on what you do best. Thanks for watching.